stuff, Luke. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, this is a, a pretty exciting time for us, uh, opening a, a new police station and one that is um, uh, purpose-built for the current requirements of uh, our community and also the requirements of our police officers. Uh, after about 17 years in the old facility in Hindley Street, we're very pleased to be opening the new Hindley Street Police Station in a centralised location. Uh, and this station uh, offers a high level of amenity to people who are looking for police services as well as those police officers working from here. Uh, it probably sets the benchmark going forward for how we would like to see our police stations right across the state and this really is the jewel in our crown and it serves as a very critical part of our community. This is the entertainment precinct of South Australia. So to have a facility like this available to the community and for our police to work from is something we're very pleased about. We'll have 24-7 patrols working from here, both uh, responding in vehicles, on foot and also using our scooters and bicycles. And the facility is designed to accommodate all of that sort of uh, equipment as well. So um, very happy to take questions, but uh, a, a very pleasing day for South Australian Police. How does this differ from any other police station and how will it help you and enhance the service? Well, as, as we have the opportunity to upgrade our facilities we obviously look at what the current requirements are and uh, some of our police stations are you know, you know, years if not decades old so we are constrained by the the infrastructure that we have to accommodate um, so when we get the opportunity to start from scratch and build from the ground up uh, then we, we can incorporate new technology uh, uh, we take into account health safety and welfare considerations uh, to make sure that our staff have what they need, but also the members of the, com the public who are coming in to uh, seek our services have the very best facilities as well. So every time we get to open a new police station, we are looking for ways to enhance that level of service and also make sure our people have the right facilities. So this is, this is probably the best we've got in South Australia right now, but I'm sure at some point in the future we'll be uh, looking at a new police station that takes into account uh, new developments in technology and amenity. Can you elaborate on that new technology? Or well, some things we can't elaborate on, but we have built-in CCTV, which is accessible to um, uh, the patrols in their typing area in our conference rooms, which double as uh, incident rooms. Uh, we've uh, catered for our new multi-purpose load-bearing vests so that they have proper drying facilities. We have bike storage, uh, so our staff can ride their bikes to work, look after their bikes, hang their wet weather gear. Uh, the, the kitchen and dining facilities are very contemporary, uh, very comfortable, and we have uh, a purpose-built equipment room which uh, really takes into account the complexity of the equipment we issue on a daily basis to make sure it's done so safely, stored correctly and uh, well accounted for. So there are probably small things across the board that uh, generally enhance the, the, the use of this facility by police. How busy is this facility in Street? Well, uh, it depends on the time of the day, uh, but uh, the Hindley Street Police Station is one of our busiest stations, particularly during the evening, Thursdays through to Sunday nights. Um, uh, I think anyone who spends any time uh, enjoying themselves in Hindley Street would recognise uh, the presence of police in, 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 the, in the precinct. They're operating from this new facility and they'll continue to do so. So uh, this is um, really recognising the need for a centrally located police station in a very busy part of the city. Commissioner, you were saying on Seven News last night there was vision of an alleged assault on one of your officers involving Rain and Cruz. What has been your reaction to that? Well, it's difficult for me to speak about that because it is before the courts, but I will say generally um, you know, we have a, a very low tolerance for anyone who assaults police officers while those police officers are in the execution of their duty and we expect the courts to uh, take into account all of the circumstances and hold those people accountable for their actions. Well, she's arguing that police pushed her first. Do you fear that could make the arrest unlawful? Uh, like I said, it's a matter before the courts. Um, we'll present our evidence to the court and the court will make a determination. We'll see the outcome of that then. But do you think there should be a zero tolerance policy for violence against police, is there? Oh, absolutely, there should be a zero tolerance policy. It's, it's an aggra aggravated offence and uh, I don't expect police officers to be injured when they're at work and when people take that sort of step to, to deliberately injure a police officer, they should uh, suffer the consequences as a result of that. Commissioner, there was a man arrested today for shooting another man earlier in the week. Can you elaborate on that? Were there gangs involved? Do you know much about that? Uh, I don't have any specific information on that that would uh, indicate that it is uh, a gang-related activity. Um, it's currently under investigation, but I don't have a lot more information. I've got another case of a youth crime overnight, another car stolen. You've previously said youth crime is not on the rise. Is that still your view? At this point in time, it is. Uh, as I said uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, there are always going to be incidents where young people are involved in crime. Uh, they are thoroughly investigated. 
but I'd just like to remind people that the overwhelming majority of young people do the right thing, don't come into contact with police other than for you know, appropriate purposes, um, and we should remember that. Uh, we do tend to focus on the sorts of uh, incidents we're talking about, and we, as we become more aware of them, we, we, we're tuned into um, picking them up. So uh, whilst we don't shy away from the fact that there are young people committing crime, I, there's nothing at this point in time which gives us rise for concern that we have a trend where there are more young people committing crime than previously. There seem to be some people in the community that say they want to see more being done to address crime. What is our youth crime? What is SAFOL doing at the moment? Well, yeah, we have patrols out there on 27, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We rely heavily on the community to provide us information when they have information about crime or suspected criminal activity. Uh, we call for assistance from the community and we are grateful for that assistance when it's provided. Uh, we work with uh, young people through the education system, we have intervention programs, uh, you know, we're, we're doing as much as we can to make sure people understand their obligations, young and old, uh, but we do rely on the community to support us in that regard. At what point does this become a problem because every day we're dealing with these sorts of crimes and we're seeing more and more of it, what does it need to get to for it to be a problem? I, I think this is what I'm saying is uh, this type of thing does happen every day. Um, the current focus on it probably raises our awareness about it, but we're not seeing anything in the incidents of reported crime or the arrests of young people that give us any particular concern at the moment that we have a, an issue that needs to be addressed. Obviously we monitor this and if we do identify those sorts of trends, we respond accordingly, but there's nothing at this point in time that gives rise for that sort of concern. Let's get the Minister up. Sure. Oh, just one more question for you. I'll do sure. questions after. Just one more. Um, with regards to this rate of cruise, would you like to see more police on the beat and perhaps that included in a, a budget, in the budget, more resources to, to deal with this tax on police? Look, <coughs> the number of police officers we have available to, for, to, for deployment has no impact on a person's decision to assault a police officer. Uh, we have uh, a large cohort of police currently deployed on a daily basis and they're involved in responding to crime and uh, calls for assistance every single day. Uh, it is an unfortunate fact that policing does carry some risks and that involves the risk of being assaulted by people who have no regard for other, other people's welfare. So it doesn't make any difference how many police officers you put out there, we're still going to see police officers being assaulted. Our expectation is that they're held accountable for their actions. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I want to say a very significant thank you to the Police Commissioner as well as all of the officers from uh, SAPOL who have del delivered this project. Um, keep in mind this project was started right in the middle of COVID. Um, the Police Commissioner has been somewhat busy as State Controller over the last couple of years. But to still see a project like this which delivers a far better workplace for the police and a far better shop front for the community is really a testament to the hard work and commitment of police right across the board. Um, you'll notice today that this police station looks and feels very different from the old Highland Street police station. One of the very first things that I did as a Member of Parliament, in fact, was to attend the Highland Street police station um, one evening about 2am. I, was, I wasn't arrested, it was actually because I was there for, for a tour, but um, it is a markedly different um, workplace than we currently see in this new facility. It's also a reminder for, for those that would seek to come to the city and behave in an antisocial way that, that you're being seen. Um, as the Police Commissioner has said, there is extensive CCTV through both this precinct and others. It's being monitored on a minute-by-minute -minute basis here in the station. And really simple things like the line of sight from the station is quite remarkable out onto Highland Street itself. A station like this also gives those people, the vast majority of those that come into our city on a weekly basis, on a nightly basis, particularly from Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, to have a good time, to enjoy themselves, it gives them confidence that they can do so safely and that they can feel, do so feeling safe in our community knowing that we have a very strong police presence here in Highland Street and the city, a fit for purpose site which works well for police and a place where um, the members of the public can feel welcome um, and safe to come in should the need arise to personally seek the assistance of police. What were you doing doing a tour at 2am in the morning? <laughs> Um, there's a special um, look at the city at 2am in the morning. Um, the city looks very different at 2am in the morning than it does at 2pm in the afternoon. Uh, as a new member of parliament I was incredibly committed to walk with police as they were out on the beat on Highland Street at 2am in the morning. I look forward to now that the police are settled into this new station to be doing the same thing as the minister 
Um, my commitment is to see firsthand and walk firsthand with our frontline police, our frontline firefighters and volunteers, and our frontline workers right across the state to see what they see and what they deal with on a daily basis. And that's where 2am plays an important role. And from that talking with them at 2am in the morning, did you see any problems or concerns? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that I saw problems or concerns. What I saw was a very strong, committed police presence in our in our city precinct. Um, I saw certainly in that time, and as we still see today, um, a volume of people that, that, are, that on, are on our city streets at, at night. And that's why a station like this is so important. It's visible, it has an imposing presence itself, and it gives those people who are in our city doing the right thing, the vast majority of people in our city doing the right thing, enjoying themselves as they should be, and as they're welcome to be doing so, the comfort and the confidence that they can do so feeling safe. Can I just get your opinion as well on youth crime? Do you stand commissioner in saying it's not on the rise? Yes, look, the police commissioner has advised, already advises me, um, youth crime um, statistics and trends are as we have expected to see them. Certainly from this government's perspective, um, as the police commissioner may come to us and ask for additional assistance in tackling issues, we are responsive and all ears, but that request hasn't come and I'm incredibly confident in the police's ability to continue to serve our community. As I um, say with, with both this issue, issue and others, is we really do count on the community to, to feed in this information to police through um, police assistance lines or where appropriate triple zero phone calls. We need to hear about these incidences and I can assure the community that the police are there, ready, willing and able to respond and continue to protect our community in the way they have four generations. Since you've taken over as the police minister, has the commissioner come to you with any more needs for funding or areas that we need to be concentrating on moving forward? Mm. Um, police Commission I meet regularly, uh, not just from a ministerial perspective, but also through the, through the Police Commissioner's contribution on the Emergency Management Council of Cabinet, of which I also sit. Um, one thing that was very clear to me as an incoming Police Minister was the extraordinary amount of resources that have been um, uh, dedicated from police from uh, really the period from 2019 all the way through until recently into tackling COVID and COVID response. Um, I'm incredibly pleased that we are transitioning from a declaration into a public health response now to COVID and that gives the Police Commissioner um, a significant degree of capacity to have those SAPOL resources back on front line and doing core police policing duties. Uh, the other uh, important matter I think that the Commissioner continues to raise with me and that we hear, we see in school settings, we see in hospital settings, we see in prisons, we see right across the board in every, in every single workplace is the daily impact that COVID absences are having on the workforce. It continues to be a difficult uh, matter for the Commissioner and for other managers across any workplace to manage. I wish I had the magic answer there but the truth is is that um, COVID cases are still in our community, roughly 3,500 today. Um, but the Police Commissioner is doing an extraordinary job, not only has he been doing the last couple of years as State Controller, but also in running one of the finest and one of the most respected police organisations anywhere in the world. Thank you. Thanks, guys. The finest. The finest.